Hi. In this question, we are given an array of size n that might contain duplicates. And the task is to find all possible unique subset. So, what is a subset? A subset is a part of the array that may or may not be contiguous, but they maintain the relative ordering. Like we have AC, then we have ABC, then we have again AB. All these are subset itself. Okay. Now we are told that each subset should be sorted. So we have two, one, two. So the first subset would be two. Then we have one and then again two. So that is not unique. Then we have two and one. Okay. Then we have two and two itself. Then we have again one, two, but we already have one, two. Then we have two, one, two, and the empty one. So now let's start the sorting. So single digit would remain the same and this would be one, two, and this would be two, two, and this would be one, two, two. Okay. So we have this, we cut off this. We have this, we cut off this, we have this, we have cut off this, we have this, we cut off this, and we have this, we cut off this, and we have this, we cut off this. So basically we have all the subset itself. Okay. Now let's proceed and try to solve this problem. So in this problem, we are told to maintain sorted in subset. So basically, if we need to insert the subset in the vector in a sorted form. So if we have this, then relative ordering is maintained is not valid. So what we can do is we can have something like one. To two and then find out the subset so that we don't need to sort it. So this is the first intuition of the first problem. Okay. Now we move forward and whenever we talk about finding all the subset, we talk about the thing known as power set, which is an iterative version. And the next is to use recursion. To use a knapsack, knapsack kind of thing. And the third one is to use backtracking. Okay. So we would discuss and every one of them has the same time complexity. Now, let us discuss the only difference. Yes, everyone has the same time complexity, but the only difference lies that these two are recursive. So they would take up the stack space. This is iterative. So they won't take up the stack space. Fair enough. Now, let us first discuss the approach of power set. So, in power set, suppose we have the numbers as 1, 2, and 3. So, what in power set, what tells us is we grow from 0 to 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay. So, 0 till 7, 2 to the power 3 minus 1, n is the size itself. Okay. Now, we go to 0. So, in 0, how many bits are turned on and at which position? No bits are turned on. So, the first subset is empty. Then we go to 0. Then we go to 1. And then the last bit is turned on. So, we would turn on this bit and we would write 3. Then we have 1, 0. Here, the second bit is turned on. So, what we would write? We would write 2 and then leave it. Because the bits which are turned off, we would not take into consideration. Then we have 3, that is 1 and 1. So here, 2 bits are turned on, that is last 2 bits. So we would just write 23 itself. Okay. Now we have 4. So we would have something like this. So we have 1, 0, 0. So if we have 1, 0, 0, that means the first bit would be turned on. Then we have 1, 0, 0, 1. Then 1 and 3. Fair enough. And then we need to move forward and we need to write like this. Okay. Then we have first and the second bit turned on. Okay. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. And the last one is the 7 itself. All the bits are turned on. So we have 1, 
2 and 3. So you can see that we have successfully produced all the subsets of the given one by using power set. So what needs to be done is we need to take out the value of n. We need to iterate from 0 till less than 2 to the power n. And the bits which are turned on, we need to take into consideration those bits and we need to insert. As the implementation is easy and we just need to iterate from that and we just need to check if the bit is turned on or turned off, so we won't be implementing it. Okay. Rather, I would tell you the most intuitive approach, which is the recursive based. So in recursive based, if you have done dynamic programming and the knapsack problem, then what we can do is if we have one, two, and three, then the first one can be that we take one into consideration. So if we take one into consideration, then the value would be one. If we don't take one into consideration, it would be blank. Next, we would make a decision for the second element. Fair enough? So here, if we take two into consideration, this would be one, two. And this, if we don't take the two in consideration, this would be only one. Now, if the next part is blank and we take two into consideration, this would be two. Else, it would be nothing itself. Now, we would take a decision for the last one, that is the third part. We would take this three into consideration. So we have one, two, and three. And then if we don't take three into consideration, we only have one, two. And if we again take this three into consideration, we have one, three. And if we don't take, it would be just one. And this would be again two, three. Else it would be just two. And if it is blank, we would take three into consideration and we won't take three into consideration. Now, encircling the distinct ones, so these are the values we can have. So basically we have 2 to the power n. So how many are there? 1 to 3. 2 to the power 3 is equals to 8. So yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So we were able to produce all of them. So this is the power set approach and this is the recursive approach. So we would move forward with the recursive approach. Now the problem arises that we don't want the duplicates. So to remove the duplicates, we would be using something known as set because set only stores unique values in log n time, which is much less than producing the producing the subsets. So subsets producing the subset would definitely take big to a two to the power n. So that is much less than that. This is much cost efficient. So we would be moving forward with this. Now let us move to the implementation and we would do the same. The first thing we are gonna do is we are we are going to declare a set of vector int and we would name it as h itself. Then we would name a wired helper, which would be a helper function. So we would have the vector of int and we would pass this array itself, that is ARR. And then we would pass something known as id, which would tell us the index we are currently at. So that we would know if we need to consider that index or remove that index. And we would have something known as vector int because we need to give them the output itself. So in output, we would just have the answer thing. So what we would do is the if we go back to the recursive case, we can see that when we reach the end, we told that these are all the things that are produced. So we would do the same here. So when we are reaching the end, so if id, so if id is equals to equals to arr dot size itself, then what we would do is we would say s dot insert the current answer and then we would return from that point. Next we would go down and we would have the element in e is equals to arr of id. And then we move forward and we have the helper one. Okay. So in helper, we have successfully, so we have success, we are processing the first one. So what we would be doing is initially we would be just ignoring that element. So if we are ignoring that element, whatever be the case, we would be moving forward id plus one and the answer value would remain the same. Then what we need to be done is we need to consider that index. 
to consider that index what needs to be done is answer dot push back we need to insert that element and then we would do the same thing again fair enough then we would go back and then we would start first sort the array itself sort a r r dot begin to a r r dot end itself so that we don't need to sort individual subsets okay then we have something known as vector int and then we would name it as answer itself and then we would pass the helper one with the arr zero and answer okay this would be used as an auxiliary one and then what we would do is and we would name it as res that is it would show the result and then we would iterate on the set itself okay and we would what we would write res dot push back the current e itself and then we would return this and yes we are getting correct out for the sample test case now let us submit this and see if we can get an ac or not 